What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the OU Daily Sports Podcast from the OU Daily. I'm Fulton Sully, joined by Jason Patakia. I don't know why you're laughing right now. You're making me laugh. I'm sorry. I just... But anyway, um, I'm here in Cincinnati in our Airbnb here. Uh, Got to get up early in like five hours, four hours, catch a flight. So um, yeah. we're going to make this pretty quick. But first of all, Jason, I mean, you watched it from home. OU looked pretty dominant on defense, especially in their 26 to – or 20 to six win over Cincinnati. Um, that stadium was rocking. Brent Venables was all over the field coaching his guys up. Uh, we're going to talk Danny Stutzman. Uh, we're going to talk what EV and, and players said after the game. We're going to talk about some historic stats and, and the significance of how this defense played compared to, you know, years in the past, them being very offensive heavy. We're going to talk some injuries. We're going to talk about the Big 12 as a whole, but um, let's just jump right into it. Um, Jason, what are your top line thoughts uh, from the Cincy game? Offense looked really bad. Defense looked really good. Um, I think the first thing, I mean, OU just stonewalled Cincinnati in the red zone today. I mean, two interceptions. I think I forget what Cincinnati was in the red zone, but I think it was like two oh, for oh for two. They they kicked two field goals. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying overall. Um, but I mean, just dominance from OU. No passing touchdowns, no rushing touchdowns. Um, OU secondary was insane. Pass rush looked much improved from weeks before. They got two sacks. Um, Danny Stutzman was all over the place. Dazon McCullough played in what was seemingly his first starting action at Cheetah. Um, he looked really good. Um, yeah, just great defensive performance. I can't say enough. Um, offensively, OU has a lot of things to figure out. It seems, um, seems like those same issues that they had, um, against SMU popped up in this game, which is really discouraging. Um, if you're OU's coaching staff and, and I guess a fan of OU, um, and it goes back to the sort of identity thing. Like what is OU's offensive identity? Is it, you know, uh, a pass first heavy attack or is it, you know, uh, is it a run first offense? And it seems like they were trying to figure that out. And Levy was trying to figure that out um, throughout the game. And it, they just went back and forth between that kind of like they did with the SMU game. Um, it just seems like they lack an identity on that side of the ball. Um, which is really interesting. So, yeah. I think you're on mute. Thanks. Embarrassing. <laughs> but I think we're going to get into that more later on here in the pod. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you nailed it on the head. I mean, the defense was just – I mean, first of all, the tackling is way better than it's ever been, um, you know, in the last 10, 15 years since, you know, since Brent left. Um, the third and fourth downs, which Venables and, and defensive coordinator Ted Roof put a huge emphasis on um, this offseason. I mean, Cincinnati was one for four on fourth down, three for 15 on third downs. I can't I can't uh, describe how big that is uh, for OU's defense. I mean, Cincinnati only averaged four yards per play. They had uh, seven more plays than OU did. And if you watch this game purely on just purely on OU's defense, this this was a domination. This was a blowout of the game. And, and like you said, the only reason the score is what it was is because the offense just doesn't have an identity. Um, and we keep talking about that here on the pod. Um, and, you know, it's it's something that Jeff Levy didn't really talk about after the game. And um, something interesting also is we're not getting coordinators every Monday nope. anymore, which is very interesting. And I'm not really quite sure um, what's going on there, but uh, something definitely that we're going to have to dive in next week with with the players as the offense continues to, you know, get things going. And, I mean, they made plays when it mattered. Dylan, I talked to Dylan a little bit after the game, and, you know, they had a bunch of three and outs throughout the game. But there at the end, he found Andrew L. Deep. And it's just plays like that that they need to make a little, a little more consistently. I think me and you were talking during the game, and I was like, they kind of just screw around. And then when it's time to, like, do something – they make it happen. I don't know why they don't just make it happen the whole game, but um, that's something to watch for sure. But anything else related to um, the defense or, or 
you know, third, fourth down. I mean, <laughs> it was interesting to see how active Brent was on the sideline. I mean, you probably got a better firsthand glimpse of it, but just seeing him on TV, I mean, he's grabbing guys. He's, you know, ripping people to shreds on the sidelines. I think he, you know, grabbed Gentry Williams by his jersey a couple times, just very active with that defensive group. And that's something that he hinted at um, before the season. It's like, you know, he said that he wanted to be more involved with the defense, something that he wasn't last year. Um, so, yeah, that that was kind of my little small tidbit that I took away from the game that was interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up. That's what I centered my gamer around. I mean, you have Brent grabbing Kanai Walker by the jersey. You have him yelling at Gentry Williams the entire game uh, after that pass interference. He was really animated with the refs, the, the officials as well, you know, had those couple of pass interference calls that he didn't really like. But, yeah, I mean, whether it was – I can think of some off the top of my head, and you can go read my story on OUDaily.com, but uh, right before halftime when they held Cincinnati to that field goal, it was a huge win. And then Cincinnati misses the field goal, and it was an even bigger win, and OU goes into halftime with uh, all this momentum. And then there was a couple other instances, I think right near the end of the third quarter when they got another fourth down stop. Um, and then, of course, at the end of the game, I think there was about four minutes left. And uh, since he's only down two scores, that's plenty of time, as we know. Um, and OU gets a fourth and two stop. So it's just – Things like that have not happened at OU for a decade plus, and they surely didn't happen last year. And we're seeing, I mean, people are going to look at the score around the country and go, OU only beat Cincinnati 20 to 6. But if you watched that game and you watched that defense, this is one of the best defensive teams in the country this far. Um, yeah. And I don't, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was the same. This game was eerily similar to SMU um I mean it, their offense makes a mistake sorry about the background noise by the way um OU's offense will make a pivotal mistake whether it's a fumble um or something like that or a turnover on downs and then you know OU's defense is pressed with their backs against the wall and they somehow you know limit SMU or, or Cincinnati to no points in the red zone, which is just fascinating to me. Um, so, yeah. Jason, who is a player, and don't steal mine because I noticed you didn't write one down, who's a player that, you know, stuck out to you on this team that isn't a big star like a Danny Setsman? We're going to get to him, but who's a player on OU's defense or offense, but I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be defense after this game, um, that really shows off OU's competitive depth, uh, that buzzword that they've been talking about for, you know, almost like four months now. Man, I got to go with Kanai Walker. I mean, they – he doesn't, again, have a starting role, but, I mean, they sub him in a lot of times, um, and he just makes plays. I think he had a career high in tackles today from what I last saw in the, the game notes. Um, I could be wrong about that, so I apologize if I am. But, I mean, you know, only had one tackle coming into this contest, and I think he had four or five or something like that. Um, and for a corner, that's that's pretty good, you know. Um, super active everywhere. You know, he's just – he's not the, you know, biggest defender, but he makes plays. It's just something that I've noticed. Um, and I think he's – probably one of OU's more physical corners. Um I think Gentry is really good in coverage. Same thing with Woody, but like I think when they're expecting a run package, they throw Kanai out there because they expect him to get physical. Um and that's exactly what he does. So that was kind of a guy that um popped out to me. Yeah, for sure. And Kanai seems like I mean getting thrown into the fire with all the injuries that OU's had and he's been you used it, the word incredibly consistent. Um, very obviously, when you look at him and you watch him practice, a gifted athlete, but um, to go in there, and, and, and Brent said it after the game, it's something that I was going to bring up. But, um, you know, they played 30-plus guys or whatever it was. He says they could have played more. He says there's more guys on this roster. I mean, the depth is there, and we're seeing it, and it's not just a buzzword anymore. But guys like Kanai Walker are a great example. Um, 
I'm picking a starter. Um, just I'm just because this guy's story is is really cool to me, and he's a very interesting person, and not only a player, but that's Keith Lawrence, who transferred from Tennessee two years ago now, and it's, this is his third season with OU, um, and he's had ups and downs throughout his career. I mean, didn't really play, or he played a lot, and then didn't really play, and then now he's back making play. Like, out of all the guys on the roster, I think preseason, when we sat down and did our depth chart projection, I don't think we talked about Keith Lawrence once. Like, um, he's out here now making plays. Richard Pearson's hurt. Um, but you got you got a young five star in Peyton Bowen. But two two weeks in a row, Key Lawrence has got a pick, and he's playing he's playing the best football of his life. So, um, just wanted to give him a shout out and picking another secondary guy. Yeah, I mean, really, this might be other than OU's linebacking corps. I mean, the secondary might be their strong suit this season. I mean, I thought it was going to be linebackers and then defensive line, but like. That secondary is really held it down. I mean, you have Peyton, you have Billy Bowman who's making plays. I mean, Gentry and Woody are, got a pick today too. Yeah. Got a pick today. I mean, they've been really consistent. Um, and if you want to go read my um, notebook from today, I mean, their numbers are, are you know it's not astronomically better than last season's, but this season they haven't allowed any passer and you know the first three games are what they are but Emory Jones is a decent quarterback they haven't allowed a single passer over 250 yards in four games this season and now do I expect that to continue no but it's progress from last season and it shows how consistent that group's been um so yeah that that secondary has been been great so far um but yeah sorry to go off on a tangent there no, I think you're exactly right. And if we were going to nit, I mean, we're talking about how great the defense is, but if we were to nitpick, it continues to be that pass rush. I mean, um, Jonah Laulu did get in and get a sack. So did Danny Stutzman. But um, if it's not Stutzman or Canick coming in, you know, defensive tackles have got to get more more pressure. And we're seeing a little bit of improvement. It's kind of inconsistent week to week, but um, would love to see the defensive line get a little more. Uh, pressure on the quarterbacks, especially as conference play goes on. Um, you know, you play talented teams like Texas. You're going to have to get after Quinn Ewers uh, down there at the Cotton Bowl. But um, brought up Jaron Canick. That refreshed my memory that, um, you know, a very scary injury occurred near the end of the game in the fourth quarter. I thought he got hit in the head. I didn't really see the play. Brent said after the game he got hit in the chest, but – I saw him stand up, look a little woozy, and then I saw Eddie Radosovich's tweet um, from Sooner Scoop on on Twitter. Uh, he was coughing up blood. Uh, they carted him off the field. Um, Jenny Taft on the Fox broadcast, I believe, said that he was, you know, had trouble catching his breath. Uh, he was put in the ambulance. I don't, and then I think, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if the ambulance actually went to the hospital, but Brent said after the game that he was released to the hospital, released from the hospital. And then he will travel back to Norman with the team. So, um, but a scary injury, not sure about Jaron's status for next week against Iowa State, but that's obviously not the most important thing. Just hope he's okay. And, um, you know, obviously an important piece for this, for this defense. He's played, he's had a heck of a season through four games. Um, yes. He's been like Danny's understudy. Also to correct myself from earlier, it was Kendall Dolby. Um, I meant to say instead of can I Walker? So, Apologies about that, but yeah, that meant to be my player of the uh the game. I had it wrong. Oh, which... Can I was good? Can I was a good one? I mean, he's everything he said was true. So, yeah. but Kendall Dolby's another guy. Yeah, like he got the interception against Tulsa. Yeah, yeah. So I saw that. I was like, oh snap! But yeah, um, yeah. I, the injury to Jaron was scary, especially since he was coughing up blood. Um. I saw a bunch of fans on Twitter saying that he was faking the injury. Um, Got to be careful about that stuff. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know where that came from, but anyway. other injuries of note. I mean, Justin Harrington didn't play, uh, and there were there were times, honestly, that I know there were some there were some busts in coverage at times. There were some overplaying it, um, specifically by Dason. Uh, but you know, he's missed a couple of games. He still had a good game, but. I think OU's missing Justin Harrington in coverage and also uh, in tackling and, and, and pressure-wise. Like, 
that dude, we saw it for, you know, the short time that he's been on the field this season, but he is a difference maker. Um, and the quicker that he can get back on the field, it will help OU uh, quite a bit. Obviously, Reggie Pearson um, missed another game. A couple other guys didn't travel with the team. Savion um, is out. Savion is out again. Uh, the offensive line is another interesting. Um, we didn't – we talked to McCade Matower and Walter Rouse after the game, but – uh, didn't hear Brent or Jeff talk too much, or maybe they did, and I missed it. But um, the offensive line, you know, another one of those groups where they'll have a good game, they'll they'll put it together, and then the next week you're just like, you know. But I I I really I don't know what to think of them after today. I thought they played well at times. I think there's all obviously areas to improve, but mostly I think um, that they played a pretty good game. Now, oh, you couldn't run the ball. Uh, you know, for anything today, but we'll talk about that later on. And that might not be the offensive line's fault, but um, any other injuries I'm missing, Jason, that you think are, are notable? I mean, other than like, no, no, I can't, I can't think of anything. I mean, unless there's some injuries in the running back room, we don't know about, but <laughs> I don't know if there is well, or not. Well, Dale and Smother and Caleb Hicks didn't make the trip, but I think that's also just because they don't take everybody on road games. I don't true. think that they're hurt um, necessarily. But, uh, oh, that's right. R. Mason Thomas missed the game. I uh, forgot about that one. Kelvin Gilliam didn't play. Devon Sears didn't play. Phil Pia didn't play. Um, so we it'll be interesting to hear on Tuesday from Brent Venables uh, if we get an injury update, um, which we pod on Tuesday night. So, you guys will get that on Wednesday morning, but um, let's go back to the offense, Jason, real quick, because I think we've talked a lot about the defense first half of this pod, um, and we'll and we'll come back to the defense to end it. But is it just me? And I think I said it at the top of the pod, but like if you watched this game, um, and you didn't have the score on the bottom, and you watched just mostly the defense, I mean, I would have thought it was like forty to ten. Yeah, it, it's weird. It it's weird. I mean, especially with how – I mean, if you look at – I mean, I know you mentioned not the the stats or the scoreboard. Did you say scoreboard or stats? My brain said – Scoreboard. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Dylan, if you look at just the stats, he had a great game. I mean, 300 yards, a touchdown, a rushing touchdown. I mean, and he was efficient. Um I mean, I mean, he threw for over 300 yards and didn't turn the ball over. But what I'm uh, trying to get at is – what I'm trying to get at is, like, the offense held held OU back today. Yeah, it, no, it did. Um, And it goes back to that, like, inconsistency. I mean, you have two running backs in Gavin Sawchuk um, and Javante Barnes who are ultra-talented and they're not playing whatsoever. Um, and then you play them last week as your primary kind of guys. Um, and then, then you go back to Tawi and Marcus Major. It's just weird. It's really weird. And like, it goes back to that whole identity thing. Like, I just don't think OU or Levy knows what the identity of the offense is right now. That's my thought. I'm just confused because I thought. You know, it made sense to me after Tulsa week. I was like, well, okay, Gavin and Javante were obviously banged up uh, during fall camp. And week one and week two, they were just kind of going to roll with Tawi and Marks Major because they could because they were playing Arkansas State and SMU. But it seemed after Tulsa week that, you know, Gavin and Javante were who we thought they were going to be and be the guys. And then they get to Cincinnati and they don't play a snap. Uh, I don't really know what's going on. (laughs) But – um, I mean, Tawi looked good at times. I mean, Marcus Major looked good at times, but I just, I'm just, I'm just very lost about what's going on there. And then, of course, um, something we didn't see today was the Jackson Arnold package, which was a plus. None but, of that. But Dylan Gabriel did run the ball uh, a little bit and had some success at times. Like you mentioned, he rushed for a touchdown. Um, so that was some of those looks were were kind of good. I'm just. I think with Javante and Gavin on the bench, uh, it just it's just a kind of a head shaker. I don't I don't really know, and I'm I'm interested to talk more to Brent and Jeff about that um, as the weeks go on. And it's I'll be interested to see if 
they play next week. I don't know. Maybe it's a rotation type of deal. Maybe it's Marcus and Tawi one week when maybe it's Javante and Gavin the next, but um, super confused on that one. You got anything else on the offense, um, Jason? I, one thing I was going to say was um, the receivers continue to be a, a group that I'm, and I know we talked throughout the game. Uh, I, I continue to be encouraged by the receivers. I mean, Andrew had another hundred yard game with seven catches. Uh, Nick Anderson had some pretty big plays. He, he scored the lone touchdown out of the receivers. Um, Drake Stoops, who had, you know, 40 plus family members there had six catches. Uh, that was pretty cool to see, but um, yeah, that's really all I got on the offense. I think it's still a, a work in progress and a, and a wait and see. Yeah. I, I I'm bullish on uh, Nick Anderson. I'm officially uh, fully bought into the Nick Anderson hype train. I think he's, really good i think he has all the size and all the intangibles i mean i wouldn't be surprised if he gets 600 receiving yards this season or maybe more i definitely think andrew is number one but i don't know nick anderson's really good got oh he got um that was another injury that we missed i mean he came up oh yeah yeah he didn't and he didn't really play up but that's a good point he this was before he scored his touchdown he was kind of limping um and stuff but yeah that's that's a good point well that's something to monitor as well but i'm obviously a big nick anderson believer as well um he's done nothing but you know show us that the last two weeks and i I, i'm sure he'll continue to be rewarded with more playing time uh jason but let's talk about a guy that probably the best player on this team he's playing like one of the best players in the country to be honest uh, and that's danny stutzman Again, uh, 13 total tackles. He had a sack. He had three and a half tackles for loss. I mean, this guy was everywhere. I talked to Dan Cody after the game. You can go read my gamer. Um, you know, obviously was a really good linebacker at OU in the early 2000s under Brent. I think he was the second round pick in the draft. So um, he knows what he's talking about. Um, and this is a direct quote from my story. He said, uh, it was the most dominant single game he's ever seen a player play on defense. He calls him study. It's his, he's his favorite player. Says he's the best OU linebacker since Curtis Lofton and Teddy Lehman. Um, wow. So high, high praise there from, from Dan Cody. But like, honestly, Danny Stutzman is is everywhere. If he doesn't make the tackle, he's the next guy that's there. Like he's always in the area. He's always finishing tackles if he doesn't start them. Um, just can't say enough good things about about Danny, and I'm sure he'll. He might get another conference nod this week for, or maybe another national one for for player of the week. Yeah, he might win the Buckus. He might like, <laughs> or at least be a finalist for it. I think that's what it's called, it's the Buckus, right? Yes, sir. And another thing, <laughs> another thing that, as we wrap up, another thing that Dan and I got into was just, and I think really is the story of this game. You can go read my gamer again, but uh, just how much. OU as a football program uh, and their defensive mindset has changed the last two years since Lincoln Riley left. Mm-hmm. Um, not only is this is this defense much improved from last year, but it's it's completely opposite from from when Lincoln Riley was here. Yes, the offense is not as good. Um, if you put Lincoln Riley's offense and Brent Venables' defense together, national championship right there. Yeah, but um, just just how just how much better the tackling is just. It's in, all, in all facets, and, and Dan, you know, he talked about the specifics, little things that guys like us who don't play football know anything about. So um, go give that a read on OUDaily.com. But, Jason, let's talk about the rest of the season for this OU football team. Obviously, next week they get Iowa State at home, a night game. Um, Iowa State, not very good. Lost to Ohio. They did beat Oklahoma State today, but Oklahoma State might be – one of the worst power five teams in the country. So now Iowa state has been a trap game for OU the last, you know, five years, I'd say Um, it's a night game, you know, never know what's going to happen, but you would, you would assume OU rolls through Iowa state uh, ahead of Texas. Yeah. I, I'm just going to caution on using the word roll through, especially the way OU's offense is performing lately. I think, Oh, you might stymie uh, Iowa State, but I don't know if they'll roll through. It kind of depends on the offense. I mean, I think the defense will show up. I think they'll limit Iowa State to under 10 points, um, maybe 
under 15, but like is OU's offense going to show up? I don't know. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. It's really up to play calling. Um, so I, I think that's the biggest thing I'm looking forward to the rest of the season is like, what is OU's offense going to morph into and when, you know, and why? Mm -hmm. Like, are they going to finally, you know, choose an identity? And that's weird to say that they don't have an identity four games through, but they really don't. That's And it's weird to say, I don't know. It, it's it's so weird but i mean if, if you want to go into the rest of the big 12 stuff you can um i have some thoughts on that go ahead um i assume ou probably takes iowa state i'm really looking forward to ou texas i mean i, I assume ou have you ever cool. been no i've never been ou texas Dude, it's it's gonna be sick i'm, I'm so excited to take you for your first time it's gonna be so fun just, just walking into the cotton bowl dude there's nothing like it in, in all sports like last year i'm walking into the like media area where you like check in and everything and i'm on my phone just kind of walking around and i look to my right and i'm walking right next to matthew mcconaughey like it's just <laughs> it's it's it, there's nothing like the state fair of texas and, and OU texas so i'm also looking forward to that one not to cut you off but I think uh, like, Texas blew out Baylor tonight. I think, you know, both these teams are probably going to be undefeated going into OU Texas. It might be a top 10 matchup. It's definitely going to be a top 15 matchup. Um, it's going to be it's going to be so much fun. Yeah. I'm excited about Fletcher's Corny's dogs as well. Uh, <laughs> that's what I've been looking forward to the most about the Texas State Fair. But, yeah, I, another Big 12 team that I think – could start showing up if it, if it's not OU. I think Kansas is really good. Um, and I mean, what OU faces Texas, and then they face Kansas. What two weeks later, um, in Lawrence, that's gonna be that's gonna be a tough game for OU. And and I'm not just saying that, but Kansas is playing some really good ball. They just beat. BYU, I think it was by like a touchdown, and BYU gave Arkansas hell, and Arkansas, you know, took it to LSU tonight. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that who is ended like up a, winning that game. Uh, I think it was LSU by a field goal. Okay, it was a close game, and Arkansas has been without Raheem Rocket Sanders um, for a bit, I think. So they're not even up to full strength, but yeah, I, Kansas is really good. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think. Um, OU after Texas they get UCF for homecoming, but then they go to Lawrence. We'll be there. That's going to be other than Texas. I think that's their their biggest test. Obviously, Jalen Daniels is really good. Um, Kansas is I can't believe I'm saying it two years in a row, but Kansas is is good at football. Um, yeah. But other than Kansas, you get at BYU late in November. It's probably going to be snowy. It's a road game. Um, that's going to be a crazy game, but also um black friday and norman against tcu i think those are i mean i don't know i don't think although ucf i think still undefeated beat beat kansas state tonight oh uh, yeah so wow. who knows? maybe maybe ucf will still be a um be a, no, be a test hard. dylan gabriel plays his old team but and, and also west virginia might not be as bad as as we originally thought i mean i think ou takes care of oklahoma state pretty so honestly looking at this Looking at the schedule, oh, you should, oh, you should win all these games, but Texas. Yeah, but um, you know, it's just a wait and see. The Big Twelve is very down this year, but um, Jason, looking forward to next week. I know we both got some some really cool stories cooking the next two weeks for Iowa State and Texas. So, um, you got anything else? No, I was just saying UCF didn't end up beating Kansas State. Oh, they did not? Yeah, they lost to them 31-44. Dang. Me and you were just full of mess-ups. Yeah. It's 10.35 at night. Yes, it is. And I got into Cincinnati last night at – I went to bed at like 2, got up this morning at 6 for the game. It's 11.30 Cincy time back. here. Tulsa tomorrow. 
Yeah, it's eleven thirty-five cents in time here. Got to get up, probably like five. So um, it's been a long day. Forgive us, but okay. So UCF loses um, to Kansas State, like we all thought they would. Um, but anyway, keep on OUDaily.com. Follow us on social media. Um, but appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, that's Jason Batacchio. I'm Colton Sully. Uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, in a couple of days on the next pod. So. Uh, see ya.